It's local government that will rob us of life, liberty, and property. If you ever wondered why someone would go into town and spray the local courthouse down with chicken manure, or possibly even try to mow down an entire town with a bulldozer, this would probably be a good example. But my choice is to tell my story, because I believe in the end that truth is going to win. My view of government has certainly changed. I never realized so much corruption was possible. Who would have guessed that the local highway department could have been turned into a cash dispenser? It's at this point I need to tell you that I'm not a lawyer, surveyor, nor appraiser. Prior to being hit with eminent domain, I had no clue Kentucky's constitution included language that would allow for property theft. It's called adverse possession, squatter's rights. The conditions for adverse possession have been established in the courts through court case law. Adverse possession mainly serves the affluent. It enables them to steal property from the middle class and poor. Corrupt government can place this on steroids. Property lines can be deleted or even moved with the stroke of a computer key. Even a neighbor mowing into your property places a property owner at risk. In my case, I believe it was malicious government intent on robbing me. In order for me to explain what happened here, I need to show you some historical images. This Google Maps image is from April of 2019. The road would be Old Richwood Road before construction. My property would be the one on the left. The deed for the property was very simple and only had five calls. The property deed started and ended across the center of Old Richwood Road. The property became the target of eminent domain for the Richwood crossover project. When I got the highway department's offer for what they planned to do, I immediately knew the property price had been lowballed. Its actual size had also been substantially reduced. It's at this point I knew I would have to hire an appraiser and surveyor. Let me say that getting either would be very difficult because most of them do work for the highway department. For more details about that, see the video they feed you to the legal system. I needed the surveyor to plot the property as deeded onto the highway department print. Overlaying the deeded plot onto the highway department print would help me to locate the missing property. I did manage to hire a local surveyor. What I was asking of him was a very simple task. He seemed to be having trouble with my request, so I decided to meet with him personally to explain what I wanted. He then let me know he does a lot of work for the highway department. He felt it was a conflict of interest for him to work for me. He mentioned the name of a highway department employee that I planned to depose. He said this person was a deacon in the church. I did get a plot as deeded out of him, but it was missing the north arrow and would have likely been thrown out of court for that reason. I have a good background in computer-aided drafting. It was only a matter of importing the drawings, matching the scale, and overlaying the plot onto the print. I was able to determine there was over 7,000 square feet of the property missing, 4,002 square feet of it along Old Richwood Road. The blue area was land actually purchased for the extension of Best Pal Drive. The green area is temporary easement and I would get that back once the construction was over. The magenta was permanent easement. Note the X'd out area along Old Richwood Road. That indicates that the road is to be closed. Whenever a road is closed, the property owner is supposed to get the property back. This would be Kentucky State Law, KRS 177.020. The opening statement of KRS 177.020, Section 4, reads as follows. Prior to the advertisement for bids on any highway construction project, and then it goes on to describe the state contacting the local county physical court to see if they want to keep and maintain the road. The closing statement of KRS 177.020, Section 5, states, in the absence of such petition, 
title shall be transferred to the owner or owners of the tract or tracts of land to which the road originally belonged. When Old Richwood Road had been severed at both ends, I contacted the physical court county commissioners to find out what happened to my property. Jesse Brewer was the only one to reply. He turned it over to the county administrator who sent me this letter. The letter affirms there were no future plans for Old Richwood Road. I then contacted Jesse Brewer to thank him for his help, and this was his reply. I sent the information to the attorney representing me at the time. He forwarded it to the highway department's attorney. This was his reply. For me, the reply appears to have cognitive overload. I would have thought the county engineer would have known about the attorney's claims regarding Old Richwood Road. A connection was added here to the GIS map. Note the name of the roads. A jury during an eminent domain trial would not be allowed to see what you're about to see. They have been using this court case law for over 60 years. It prevents what is actually being paid for the properties from being admitted as evidence. I would like to tell you just a little bit more about the attorney that I was facing. His name appears in this PowerPoint presentation. It's an interesting report. The statement on page six caught my attention. How do we allow government to become this abusive? His name also appears in the deed of conveyance for the following properties. $2,750,000 for approximately 1.7 acres at this location. $71,587 for 170 square feet of this ditch. $135,000 for approximately 3,000 square feet of the ditch here. $906,682 for 5,837 square feet to get across this motel parking lot. I was forced into court. The court appointed commissioners put a price of $18,000 on this 1.18 acre zone commercial three lot. Because of this low commissioner's price, I was placed into a situation of even if I win, I lose. The first attempt at adverse possession came from the truck stop. They had placed their sign on property legally deeded to me. Note the Boone County Planning Commission sign for a zoning change. It was related to a sign plan for the truck stop. I didn't request the zoning change. I attended the zoning hearing and learned the hearing for the sign had been canceled. A representative for the truck stop was there. I made it clear I wanted their sign removed from my property. They let me know that they were interested in buying the rest of the lot. There are emails I wish I could publish, but they contain confidentiality notices. I'll say while I was working overtime to pay my lawyer, the truck stop was in communication with the planning commission about the design of the property. As progress continued on the crossover project, KYTC District 6 scraped away Old Richwood Road. Then KYTC District 6 poured the residents a driveway across my land at the taxpayer's expense. I believe the GIS map updates are done by the County Planning Commission. A new GIS map update removed the original Old Richwood Road. What was to be Best Pal Drive then became Old Richwood Road. I believe this was done to convolute the record. KYTC District 6 gave the residents every condition needed to claim my property through adverse possession. Anyone passing this location would think the owners would be the properties the driveways lead into. The residents put up the squatters fence. This would enable them to make the squatters claim later. I put KYTC District 6 protest banners on my car 
and parked it in the area that legally belongs to me. The residents who put up the squatter's fence decided to hide the banners rather than calling out the highway department. The before and after image would place the car location across the street on what would be my property. I got noticed there was another zoning change request for another property that came in contact with the original old Richwood Road. I let them know that the property dimensions were likely incorrect and that it was possibly landlocked. I don't think they cared. There is over 3,000 square feet missing along Dixie Highway. The highway department pushed the road easement almost 40 feet into the property. Note the two existing US-25 right-of-way lines. Extracting the road easement may have been a way to steal a piece of the pie for the next owner. The real markup on the property to occur once it's deeded to them. It would be a way to basically give them the property and pay them to take it. A few days after my planning commission visit, one of the local politicians, Mary Ann Proctor, said she will be filing a bill next session to protect our homes from squatters. She should replace the word homes with property. I think it's important that a legislator should know how to identify a squatter before creating law on the subject. Otherwise, they may be creating law to help corrupt government steal land from the rightful owners. Having government that is willing to alter records and ignore deeds puts everyone at risk. Almost everything that KYTC District 6 done at the Richwood exit was rejected in their own engineering study. Taxpayers should not be paying for any parts of the Richwood crossover project rejected in this report, especially for the cash dumps for ditch. It's really simple. Pull the appraisal for the ditch along with the deed of conveyance. Ask the highway department employee responsible for approving that payment to explain it. No business would allow their employees to loot the company. We shouldn't allow government employees to loot the treasuries. The prisons are filled with people who have committed lesser crimes than I have seen here in Boone County. I'm positive there are some people who need to be jailed. Government is entitled to the land they paid for, not what they attempt to steal. Using eminent domain, they not only have a way to give the property to their next planned owner, they may have found a way to pay them to take it through extracted road easements. Remember, the cash dumps for ditch program clean sweeps the trail once the maps are updated. None of what they've done was about saving the taxpayers money. The system has clearly been gained by people who have been there for decades. When they begin to alter records and ignore state law, we should all be concerned. If we didn't get the loot, we got the bill. What they rob from one property owner, they can stuff in the pockets of their friends. Please don't think I'm greedy. We gave the highway department an opportunity to buy the entire property for $238,000. They refused. They were just hell-bent on robbing me and using me to feed the local legal economy. The state's first appraisal was thrown out. The state's second and the appraisal I paid for both called the property size into question. When government tries to steal the land, do the laws of eminent domain still apply? Or would it be what they were willing to pay others? The area with gravel and waste concrete may have been the area planned for the truck stop sign. A geotech engineer would know the advantage or disadvantage of this. It may also be the area where they decided to bury their concrete waste. I told the truck stop I intend to recover the missing property before I sell. The highway department then installed this light post. I'm sure there's a rather large easement around it, but it wasn't paid for. The nightmare just doesn't end. This is lot 340. Originally, the highway department was going to install a temporary bypass for road construction, but they included a permanent easement and brought a pipe into the property, turning it into a wastewater dump for surrounding properties. I called them out on this. I went to talk to Carol Rambler at KYTC District 6 about this, 
And when she seen what was done, her comment was, they can't do that. And at that point, I'd have to ask, who was she referring to? The blue hatched area represents approximately 4,000 square feet KYTC District 6 took without paying for it to widen the road. HDR Incorporated was the first in-person contact for eminent domain on these properties. Trying to reason with HDR, I called the pipe and permanent easement out. They insisted they had a right to do that because of the natural water flow. The pipe and easement would have rendered the property useless for my original plans. When the case was turned over to the court, their request was considerably different. Now there would only be temporary easements. Note the permanent easement and its alignment. A Duke power line would be brought in over the same area later. My investment in this property is now a loss. Duke owns the power line. I don't know who paid for the installation of it. None of the land that was taken for it was paid for. Bolin was the company that installed it. The highway department was willing to pay $2,750,000 for 1.7 acres, about a quarter mile away. I've made a lot of mistakes in my life, but there's one thing that I practice as though my life depends on it. I tithe on business investments. The local homeless shelters get 10% of the gross profits. I'm hoping that I can recover what was stolen. The solution to fix this is there is no adverse possession. There are no squatter's rights. If the persons on the property cannot produce a title, deed, or rental agreement, they should be removed. There are companion videos to this one. The first is called, Even If I Win, I Lose. It explains the predetermined outcome set up for me in the court. The second is called, The Real KYTC District 6. Thank you for watching.